For most of the past 18 months, investors have been buying shares in anticipation of a turnaround in India's macro and earnings led by actions by the Narendra Modi government. More recently, investors appear to be giving up because earnings indicators and macro indicators remain largely unchanged. We at Morgan Stanley think this fall in share prices is a buying opportunity for investors. The government has reined in inflation and leading indicators such as capex and money supply growth suggest that the economy is turning maybe as quickly as the next three months. Join me, Rhythm Desai, as I decode the market's next move, analyze the underlying trends in the economy, and assess the performance of the first 365 days of the NDA government as guest editor on CNBC TV 18 on May 15th. Welcome back. Uh, it was a good day on the markets. Uh, the Sensex and the Nifty rose 1.4 percent. The mid caps 1.5 percent. Uh, uh, and the more important takeaway was it looks like the market has put a slightly enduring bottom in place uh, uh, at 8,100. That was higher than the previous bottom of 7,996 or 8,000. So it looks like we have started a process of higher tops and higher bottoms, but uh, the jury is still out. Let's get a technical perspective. And on that note, Sudarshan Shkani joins us. Uh, Sudarshan, volatile day, but a strong close. What's your reading? Good evening. Uh, markets had a very choppy day today, but all is well that ends well and the markets ended with gains and these gains have given us a new message. Today the markets went up and then fell down quite dramatically intraday, uh, almost fell 150 points. This is becoming normal, one day the markets are up, one day the markets are down, so a decline, a sudden decline after a rally uh, was not something uh, of, to be considered. What happened subsequently was interesting, that 150 point decline was bought into and the markets rallied and closed at the highs for the day. For the first time in many days, an intraday decline occurred and during the day that decline was purchased into, the decline vanished by the time the day ended. We could easily consider this to be a running correction. A running correction comes about when the markets are now going higher where the markets decide that they will not close lower. If at all there is a correction, it will be done intraday. Uh, one day is too early to suggest that the market trend has changed. But given today's price pattern, it is worthwhile to consider going long in the Nifty, staying long in the Nifty and the Bank Nifty. For the Nifty, you have a stop which is 8100 to start with. But if the markets remain above 8100, this stop can be quickly raised and traded. So the view is that we should be long in a market where, which is still logged in a trading range and keep a stop at 8100. Okay, all right. So that's a directional call, Sudarshan. What about individual stocks? Uh, any ideas that you'll uh, go with tomorrow? For tomorrow, I would suggest one of the erstwhile blue chip and high performers, Asian Paints. Consider buying Asian Paints. The stock has gone through a deep correction, is now inside a narrow range. Given the broadly optimistic outlook for most markets after such a sharp decline, it is possible that Asian Paints may break on the upside. So you buy Asian Paints, but please follow the stop losses that we suggest. Fair point, Sudarshan. Thanks a lot for joining us. Well, the MSCI or the Morgan Stanley Capital Index semi-annual index review is out and there have been eight additions and one deletion from the India list of stocks. My, uh, Nimesh now joins us uh, with all the details that you ought to know and that were active in the market today. Nimesh? That's right, but the bigger impact is that the India's weightage in the MSCI goes up from 6.5% to 7%. So that's a 50 basis point hike in the, in the MSCI weightage. Apart from that, India will see the largest inflows of $1.15 billion when the changes are effective on the close of May 29th. In terms of eight stocks which are added to the MSCI, MSCI India Index, those includes names like Bharat Forge, Bharti Infertel, Concor, Aisha Motors, Lupin, uh, United Spirits, Siri Cements, uh, and, and, and United Phosphorus, to name a few. Apart from, apart from Lupin, most of the other stocks rallied pretty hard and were up between 4 to 8%, 9% in today's trade. The only deletion in that, in that list is the Reliance Infra. Even that managed to buck the trend in today's trade. Apart from that, there are some weightage, increase, in, uh, weightage reduction and, and increase as well in this MSCI. So in terms of weight increase, the biggest gainer will be Bharti Infratil. That stock will see 
additional inflows of close to $300 million when the changes are effective on, 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 on May 29th of close. Apart from that, United Spirits, that stock was up 10% in trade today, and even that stock will see an additional inflow of close to $52 million. In terms of weight reduction, uh, the, the HL is one stock that will see a reduction in the weightage, which would mean a potential selling of close to $60 million. Uh, some, in, in, in some of the large cap names, Infosys and SGFC will see selling of close to $160 million. Apart from that, Sun Pharma is another stock to watch out for. Even there, the, the, there is a weight, weight in reduction, and that would mean potential selling of close to $72 million. Net net, with this eight changes, the weightage, in, uh, weightage of India goes up by 50 basis points, and India will see potential buying of $1.15 billion when the, when the change is effective from the close of May 29th. Back to you. All right, Nimesh, thanks so much for that. Yes, lots of rally in the stocks that were added on to that index. Moving on, Adani, and enterprises missed street estimates. The company's performance was dragged lower by the power business. However, the port and the coal storage business continue to do well. Let's now hear out what the management had to say. We continue to be having the robust integrated infrastructure business across port power and resources. And we think that the country is poised for significant economic growth and development in the times to come. One of the points which normally remains a matter of discussion is our long-term debt to equity, which we continue to remain close to two is to one. For a conglomerate of this size with so many infrastructure projects, we continue to believe that we are in very strong shape vis-a-vis -vis this particular aspect. All right, that's what from Adani Enterprises, but a number of other companies too were reporting their numbers today or were otherwise in the news. Mangala Malu joins with that list. Mangala. Well, thanks a lot for that. Indeed, a lot of stocks were buzzing in trade today. We started the banking stocks. In fact, it wasn't just the large cap banks which uh, were active in trade today, but also mid cap banks like Union Bank, OBC, and Syndicate Bank, all of them gaining between 4 to 7 percent in trade today. In terms of earnings reaction, TV today was down about 13 and a half percent in trade today. They posted their numbers. The EBITDA margins came in at 8 percent versus 26 percent, while the net profit was also lower by 58 percent at 6.7 crores. In terms of earnings that came in today, uh, Imami had a good quarter. That stock surged nearly 3% from the day's low towards the end of trading session when it released their numbers. The total income came in higher by 24% at 554 crores, while the profit after tax was also up by nearly 42% at 158 crores, which compares to a CNBC TV18 poll of 128 crores. Ahead of earnings, we had ITD Cementation, which was up 8% in trade today, and MCX and Jubilant Foodworks both up between 6 to 7.5% as well. They report their numbers tomorrow. With that, back to you. All right, Manglam, thanks so much for a quick wrap-up on those stocks then. Let's move on. Where should investors park their money? Let's find out what brokerages are betting on. Reema Tendulkar is joining in with the latest. Reema. Thanks so much for that. The first one I picked is CLSE on Shobha Developers. They say that the earnings were lower than expectations, but the company has come out with a strong guidance for FY16, and that is driven by the company's launch in Bangalore, which is for, it's a mid-income project called Dream Acres. But overall, because of the miss in Q4, they have lowered their FY16-17 revenues by 5 and 6 percent respectively, and their earnings estimates by 9 and 10 percent. And this is because they're building in a slower rebound in the non-Bangalore sales. So they maintain a buy with a target price of 5.37. Credit Suisse has upgraded Union Bank. They say yes, Q4 has disappointed the street, but now the stock is down 40 percent on a YTD basis. Its valuations are only at 0.4 times nominal book value, much lower than theirs. So that's the reason for the upgrade. Target price is unchanged at 140. Back to you. All right, Reema, thanks so much for that. Let's move on then to our special coverage, Asian Tigers. CNBC TV Indian Shireen Bhan caught up with Joanna Chua, Chief Asia Economist of Citigroup, who says that the growth forecast for India is above consensus and expects the RBI to go slow with rate cuts for now. Our growth forecast in India is a little bit above consensus at this juncture, right? So we need to see how things pan out. Aside from some of the data that you know has, has been a little bit mixed, we also acknowledge that trade data in the first quarter of this year has been also disappointing, mm -hmm. right? So we're going to get India's uh, trade data this week. We'll see how things pan out. Again, trade is not a big part of the overall GDP complex. But generally, I think things are still mixed, so we need to see a little bit more clarity. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we're kind of signaling, that there is a bit of downside risk. It's not unique to India, but certainly it's something to watch out. 
We think India RBI can still cut uh, another 50 basis points. Uh, maybe the next cut will be around 25 basis points in June, and then we have the other cut a little bit later. But you know, you have to also kind of factor in that India has to be a bit cautious. It's a, bit, a little bit different from China because you know India still has a current account deficit, right? Albeit quite small. Yes. And it's it also the same significant. It has changed significantly, but you know, obviously there has to be a little bit more cautious kind of stance. And India was coming from a relatively high inflation standpoint mm -hmm. from the previous year, so RBI needs to anchor expectations. So uh, we do think now that RBI has done already uh, two interpolicy meeting cuts, mm. uh, you know, that they're, they're going to probably go a little bit slower now, but we, we think there's still a little bit room there. Right. Uh, rate cut, that's the big expectation, and we will know that on June 2nd. Well, for the moment, that's all we have on Markets Today. Thank you for watching. Have a great evening.